I'll get that detail for you. I'll send it over to you. I don't have it exactly. Seconds, uh, thanks, thanks, Vice Chancellor. Well, as you know, uh, Minister, on the 29th of October, uh, the US House of Representatives uh, overwhelmingly passed a, a resolution to recognise the 1915-1917 uh, genocide in Armenia. Um, and of course, it's also been recognised by the United Nations so, uh, Commission on Human Rights, the European Parliament, Council of Europe, I think 16 of our uh, EU, fellow EU uh, member states and maybe 32 countries uh, worldwide. So isn't it time uh, perhaps for yourself and the government to uh, bring forward a, a motion, a resolution to recognise the uh, awful genocide which happened in Armenia 100 years ago? Uh, Deputy, the Irish government has expressed its uh, deepest sympathy for the enormous suffering of the Armenian people during the terrible events of 1915 which resulted in the appalling deaths of very large numbers of, of the Armenian population uh, in the Ottoman Empire. No Irish government uh, has taken a position on the recognition of the events uh, of 1915 as genocide, believing that it's not, in, uh, it's not in a position to adjudicate on this contentious matter, uh, involving uh, the consideration of a number of legal issues uh, and an assessment of the actions and intentions uh, of many parties during that time. Uh, I would note uh, that there is no international consensus uh, on whether the events of 1915 uh, can be considered a genocide. Uh, Ireland follows the practice of recognising genocide only where there has been, an, uh, 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 there has been established uh, by a judgment of an international court uh, or where there is uh, international consensus on the matter. Consequently, I am not in a position to bring forward a motion or, or resolution on the matter at this time. These ter terrible events continue to overshadow relations between Armenia and Turkey, and the two sides remain sharply different, uh, sorry, maintain sharply different historical interpretations of these events. Uh, as the Irish experience demonstrates, the process of recon reconciliation uh, and coming to terms with the past uh, is certainly not easy. Uh, Ireland urges Armenia and Turkey to take advantage of any opportunity to progress reconciliation on this matter uh, for the good of their peoples and the wider region. I believe it is important that we do not permit current international developments in the region uh, to influence uh, our judgment on events that took place uh, as far back as 1915. I know that's not what you were looking for, Deputy, uh, in terms of my response, but I think it is important that Ireland would be consistent uh, in terms of our approach on issues like this, uh, and I think I've outlined that consistency. For shouldn't we have a particular interest in this, given what happened to our people uh, in the, from 1845 to 1852 or so, uh, which was effectively a genocide as well? But genocide is, is defined, I think, in the 1948 UN Genocide Convention as acts committed, I quote, committed with intent to destroy in whole or in part a national, ethical, racial or religious group. And we know that in 2015-17, uh, when Turkey entered the First World War on the, on the side of the central powers, uh, the Armenians, the Christian people uh, who, uh, you you know, played a valuable role in business and, and economics throughout the Ottoman Empire. They were targeted uh, and uh, they were identified, if you like, as the enemy within. Um, and the leadership was rounded up first in Constantinople in April uh, uh, 1915. Uh, then there were de deportation of hundreds of thousands of Armenians, confiscation of their property. Driven into the, they were driven into the deserts of northern Syria that we're very familiar with in recent times. Mass shoot there were mass shootings, burnings, poisonings. Uh, at the end of it all, up to a million and a half people were dead. Uh, so, I mean, surely the European Parliament uh, has asked all uh, European, uh, European Union members uh, to actually, you know, re formally recognise this horrendous event as a genocide. Deputy, um, um, some of what you say is true, but there is no international consensus on whether the events of 1915 can be considered a genocide. There has been no ruling uh, in relation to this matter by an international court, and neither the EU, i.e. the Council or uh, the High Representative for Foreign Affairs uh, and Security Policy, nor the UN has recognised these events as genocide. The European Parliament, it's true, adopted a resolution on the 15th of April uh, 2015 uh, on the uh, centenary of the Armenian Genocide, uh, calling on Turkey to recognise the events of uh, 2015, or 1915 as genocide, genocide and calling on both Turkey and Armenia to work towards reconciliation and a, a normalisation of their relations. Uh, the Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe uh, recognised the events as genocide in, uh, 2000, in, in a 2001 resolution. Fifteen member states' parliaments have passed resolutions recognising 
uh, 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 the 1915 events as genocide, uh, but governments of 10 member states uh, have said that, that they do not recognize uh, the events of 1915 as geno genocide or have refused to take a position on the matter. Remaining member states have avoided being drawn into the issue. So the point I'm making is um, that, that there isn't a settled international position on Thank this. You. Far from it. Uh, and, and I think I've outlined uh, the basis by which Ireland would introduce a resolution uh, on this matter, and we don't Final have question. it. Well, for the past are historians, uh, and historians who have, uh, you know, uh, they have, you know, delved into the documentation of what happened. And, for example, in July 1915, the U.S. ambassador to the Ottoman Empire, uh, Henry Morgenthau, he said, and I quote, a campaign of race extermination is in progress under a pretext of reprisal against rebellion. And, and that was uh, on the horrible crimes that were being committed about the, against the Armenian people. Uh, also, in, in the year 2000, 20 years ago, 126 scholars worldwide, including renowned people like a Nobel Prize winner, Eli Voisel, historian Yehuda Bauer, sociologist, Horowitz, uh, Irving Horowitz, they published a statement in the New York Times affirming uh, that from their studies, the uh, Armenian, and I quote, the Armenian genocide is an incontestable uh, uh, historical fact. Uh, and as I said, surely we should be the most conscious, uh, you know, given Lord John Russell and his government uh, and their behaviour and the treatment of our ancestors, uh, the, our ancestors of th those of us in this house, in, the, in those seven years when we were, you know, uh, uh, over a million people, uh, you know, were starved to death, when well over a million had to emigrate. Uh, we're so conscious of it, what happened in the former Yugoslavia, the awful events uh, and attacks on the Jewish people, uh, what happened in the Holocaust, uh, what happened in Rwanda. Surely, you know, we, perhaps more than most nations, should be most acutely aware of this, and we should bring, you should bring Remind forward that motion. And by the way, if I brought forward the motion, or colleagues and myself brought forward final such response. a motion, would you support it? Final response. Deputy, I'm not disputing the awfulness of what happened. Uh, or the number of people who were killed, or the suffering involved. What I'm saying is, is whether or not it is legally uh, categorised as, as a genocide is in dispute. That's the, that's the only dispute here. And, and in fact, in, in 2015, uh, the issue was debated at the Oireachtas uh, Joint Committee on Foreign Affairs and Trade when the, when the then uh, Senator Mark Daly put forward uh, the proposal uh, that, that, that the Joint Committee recognise the suffering and loss of the Armenian people. Um, in this, the 100th anniversary uh, of the Armenian genocide, uh, and the motion was uh, uh, defeated, uh, eight to five. So it's not like we haven't debated this issue. Um, so, um, uh, of course, I'm aware of an ongoing lobby on this issue, but I think I've, I've stated repeatedly uh, at the basis uh, on which um, we will make a decision on this, and that is uh, uh, on the basis of the, the legal understanding uh, and court rulings in relation to it. Now we move on.